Hey guys, welcome to episode number 138. I got my bulkhead fittings in, as you can see. Uh, they're one inch, threaded uh, inside and out. And uh, today I wanted to work on a little project here. Uh, this is an external Durzo standpipe, and this is an overflow design uh, that is meant to be fairly quiet. Uh, when it's operational. So I'll just go ahead and walk through the different parts that are involved here and explain what they do. Obviously the bulkhead is going to be installed on the aquarium after I drill the holes. On the inside of the aquarium we have a standard one inch PVC fittings and uh, these will not be uh, welded together. These will just be loose fittings and uh, what I'm going to do is just screw this in here and uh, typically how the Durzo works is the elbow is uh, located in the downward position um, but uh, I might flip that and, and have it um, up uh, just to kind of raise the water level in the tank a little bit we'll see, I, I think it might make more noise if it's, if it's pointed up than pointed down uh, typically you see them pointed down so uh, those fittings won't be welded and then on the other side, all of these fittings do need to be welded because um, water is flowing through them. So again, we have another uh, one inch uh, fitting here. It's, it's threaded to go on the inside of this, this one inch bulkhead. And then we've got one inch pipe. And then we have a, a, a one inch to one and a quarter inch bushing, which goes into a one and a quarter inch T. And then we've got a, a one and a quarter inch cap and then another uh, a female uh, threaded fitting here one and a quarter inch that goes into a, a male uh, to barbed fitting and uh, that will attach to your uh, your braided nylon uh, with your hose clamp obviously this braided nylon isn't a large enough diameter uh, for this pipe uh, just using it as a, a reference here um, and all of these pieces will be uh, cemented together. Uh, I would like to note that I am leaving the cap uh, not cemented because that's going to be above the water level uh, in the tank so uh, I won't have to worry about that. Actually I want to be able to pop that off uh, if needed to be able to clean it out or access it at a later point in time. Um, the only other parts that are involved here is uh, just a little airline valve and uh, what I'm going to do is drill a small hole and uh, attach that to the uh, the top of the uh, the cap here and that will allow me to adjust the amount of air uh, that's being released through the back end of, of the, the Durzo standpipe. Uh, now obviously I've got my clear primer and my clear cement that's going to allow me to attach all the pieces of PVC and then I just have some Teflon tape here uh, whenever I've got threaded uh, connections, I want to make sure I use Teflon tape uh, for those to prevent leaking. That's especially true here and here where water will be flowing through uh, on the outside of the aquarium and we definitely want to make sure that those are leak proof. So um, those are all the pieces. Uh, the reason why this pipe steps up from a one inch to a one and a quarter inch is because I've, I've heard and I've read that the Durzo standpipe uh, works best when the diameter increases on this back side. Uh, if, if I was to do all of this in one inch fittings, uh, it wouldn't work as well and you'd actually get a lot more noise. So by stepping up the size of the pipe, I've heard that the noise level will go down. So that's essentially what I'm looking for here. And uh, this is the design that I'm hoping to use on my 40 gallon breeder aquariums. So let's go ahead and put it together.
finished external Durzo standpipe assembly on the 40 gallon breeder. As you can see, uh, I've drilled my hole, I have my bulkhead installed, I have the, uh, the inside of the, the Durzo uh, in the tank with the elbow pointed down. Again, I might reverse that and have the elbow pointed up depending on how much noise this thing uh, ends up making in the end. And then on the back side, I have my, uh, my fittings attached here. This is all now kind of one piece, and it kind of screws in like a giant T to the back side of the bulkhead. And uh, I make sure to have the cap pointed up and the barb fitted in pointed down. And that will allow me to attach my uh, braided nylon um, hose to that barb, and that will ultimately lead to my sump tank. Uh, and then I can adjust this valve to regulate how much air gets through and uh, that should help with silencing this overflow. Uh, it's important to note that this does take a little bit of space here on the, uh, the back side of the tank, uh, especially because I had to go from the one inch up to the one and a quarter inch and um, I wanted to uh, get a threaded by threaded uh, bulkhead and uh, that actually added a few more parts and a, and a little bit more uh, to the depth of, of this uh, Durzo as well. Uh, simply because I wanted this to be removable. Um, so as you can see, this is a very modular system. I can take this part off um, anytime I want to. Obviously there's the bulkhead. Nothing is glued into the bulkhead, or I should say uh, cemented or welded into the bulkhead. Um, this can be removed, the cap can be removed, the, uh, the barbed fitting can be removed, so um, if I ever need to modify this, uh, it's, it's very simple to take this apart, uh, clean it, update it, put it back together, uh, and uh, I'm hoping that because of that, uh, I'll be able to use these parts for a very long time, uh, potentially in, in other setups down the line. but. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I don't actually mind the amount of space that's going on behind the tanks because, as I've said, I'm going to be running my drain lines. Um, I'm going to have a drain manifold, and I'm actually going to have a return manifold up here as well. Uh, so those will need some space uh, back there to, to live. Um, so I'm, I'm digging it. I'm liking it. I think, um, I think the, the external Durzo was definitely the way to go. Uh, I didn't want to drill the bottom of the tank and that's how a typical Durzo uh, is attached to your aquarium. So um, this looks like it's going to work just fine and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, rate, comment, subscribe. Uh, this is a special Saturday edition of DIY Wednesday. I didn't get quite around to, uh, to making a video on Wednesday but I have exciting news guys. Um, since you've stuck to the end of the video, uh, I am doing uh, a DIY marathon this coming week. And as you can see, I've already got another hole drilled here in this, uh, this second 40 gallon tank. And uh, there's a tank missing there because I'm drilling that one currently. So stay tuned for that video on, on drilling the tanks. Uh, I've got my pump coming. I've got my sump over here. Uh, I've got parts all over the place and uh, I'm actually about to tear this tank down and uh, move all the fish over so I can drill this tank as well. So as you can see there are a lot of fun things going on. Uh, I'm hoping to put this room together for real and for good uh, in the coming week or two. And uh, a lot of that is going to happen this coming week, DIY Marathon. I'm going to try to get a video up every day of progress on this fish room because it's really starting to kick into gear. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you later.